One of the epic stories of the Great War is that of the Lost Battalion, a story that captivated the public shortly after the events occurred in 1918, and honestly it still captivates history buffs to this day. A central figure of this story was a gentleman named George McMurtry, 308th Infantry in the 77th Division. The losses that resulted from these days of fighting in the Argonne were significant, but I think it's the story of survival that makes it such a fascinating bit of history to read. While I won't get into the story itself, at the end of the video I'll point out two fantastic resources for you to check out. George McMurtry from the Lost Battalion is probably best known as the millionaire stockbroker from New York. But for those who didn't know it, George Gibson McMurtry Jr. was actually born in Pittsburgh on November 6, 1876 and spent most of his youth here. He was the recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions in the Argonne. He was cut off and surrounded by the enemy, wounded twice, but continued to organize and direct his men against the German attack on their position until the attack was defeated. McMurtry's father was an orphan who immigrated to the United States from Ireland and would become one of the wealthiest men in Pittsburgh, perfecting various methods of iron production and presiding over the Apollo Iron and Steel Company, then founding a model company town of Vandergrift in 1895. Undoubtedly, George McMurtry Sr.'s commanding leadership would have been an enormous influence on his son. When George Jr. was just three years old, George Sr. and his wife Clara purchased this home at 68 Irwin Avenue. It was then called Allegheny City. Today it's known as 913 Brighton Road, Pittsburgh. The home still has the 68 in the transom window. It's situated across from Allegheny Commons. Today it's the oldest public park in Pittsburgh. When George McMurtry was just 10 years old, the Pittsburgh Psychorama Company began construction of a large building that would house a 360 degree mural that told the story of the Battle of Gettysburg. One has to imagine this 10 maybe 11 year old boy being only a few hundred feet near this cathedral size house presenting captivating images not just on the canvas but in the props that were made to have the patrons feel as if they were connected to the battle scenes. The Cyclorama opened its doors to the public on June 14, 1887. At 25 cents for a youth admission, I can only guess that this would have been a draw for any young person, let alone the young McMurtry, to come and learn the story of one of the most significant battles in American history. The Cyclorama Company also invited veterans of the Civil War to come into the building and share their experiences with the public from time to time. In December 1890, George Sr. and Clara McMurtry would sell their home on Irwin Avenue to Augusta Kaufman, who was the wife of Jacob Kaufman, one of the co-founders of what became Kaufman's department stores. The McMurtry family then rented a home just a few blocks away at 920 Lincoln Avenue. George Jr. left Pittsburgh to attend St. Mark's All Boys Boarding School and graduated in 1896. He then studied at Harvard until the outbreak of the Spanish-American War. Leaving Harvard in June of 1898 at 22 years of age, he enlisted in the 1st Regiment of the U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, better known as Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders. The young McMurtry would participate in the famous Battle of San Juan Hill on July 1st, 1898 but he would contract a tropical disease that would send him back to the United States in October of 1898. Able to join his original class and graduate from Harvard in 1899 at 23. So he returns to Pittsburgh and in June of 1900, young McMurtry is working as a clerk in the steel mill. 
Before he heads to New York for his new career, I have to point out a glimpse of his life in January of 1899. In a Pittsburgh Society news clipping, it reveals the young McMurtry entertaining a fellow veteran that he served with in the war. It was John C. Greenway, one of Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Greenway would later become the 101st Infantry Commander in the 26th Division during the Musargon Offensive. I mentioned this clipping because I wondered how a young McMurtry would become a millionaire at such a young age. And then you think about the people that he rubbed elbows with in Pittsburgh and New York. Aside from the fact that his father was very wealthy, he was surrounded by millionaires himself. So when McMurtry eventually moves to New York to establish his career on Wall Street, you can just imagine that the people he called on to help him build his brokerage house would have been neighbors and friends. So just a little glimpse into the early years of this fascinating man from Pittsburgh. But if you really want to read about the Lost Battalion, I highly recommend two books. One is The Absolute Bible on the Subject, Finding the Lost Battalion by Robert Laplander, and the other one, uh, Never in Finer Company by Edward Langell. Uh, both books are excellent. Uh, you won't be disappointed. And finally, if you get a chance, check out my website, Great War Pittsburgh. It's dedicated to honoring and remembering the people of the Great War that had ties to Pittsburgh and western Pennsylvania.